Ok, eu acho que podemos começar. Uh, but I'm not seeing Elvin here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So, um, we are going to start um, our next block of sessions. And first presentations, uh, presentation is uh, Elvin's. He's going to talk about um, current situation uh, of secondary school teachers in Peru. So uh, we, I think, uh, all know how um, some situations, external factors, um, our context uh, in which we are uh, working and living can affect, affect our work. So I think Alvin is going to uh, present um, his uh, experience from Peru. Here you go. Hi to everyone, thank you for attending this uh, talk. Yes, um, I'm Elvin Woman and I will present more or less my experience about running Wikipedia, reading Wikipedia in the classroom. And uh, the topic specifically is the pedagogy in crisis in Peru. So how we can uh, more or less help the teachers by bringing Wikimedia projects to the education. Uh, this is a short video about me, I will explain a little bit where I come from. I come from Peru in a town called Nuñoa. It's a Quechua town in the south of Peru and we mainly speak in Quechua language. And besides that, um, my journey uh, began in 2019 when I first attended the Wikimania conference in Stockholm and there I decided to join to the team because uh, to the Wikimedia movement in general, I don't have an affiliation or any user group but I do it by myself. So the idea was to go to my town and bring this Wikipedia, something that uh, my town probably or all communities, minoritized communities, they are not aware of, that our language is important and our language needs some representation and some visibility on the web and also in, in the society in general. And with this idea, I spend more or less one or two months uh, every year to, I, I go to Peru because I'm based in Austria, but I dedicate one or two months in a year to go to Peru and bring the Wikimedia projects there. And so for that, I, 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 I run several uh, ideas and projects about uh, how to bring how to bring Wikipedia there. So uh, the first attempt was to call uh, attend uh, to go to the radio station because this is the main uh, communication model for the Kichwa people. So I invite them to join to a workshop about Wikipedia and they were so excited about this but somehow they, they don't have enough time to attend to these kind of talks and also the topic is quite new and so on. So it's interesting but they don't have um, enough, uh, they feel that they don't have enough skills or knowledge to 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 apport on this uh, on the Wikipedia. So we gather a small um, people there where I explained what I was doing it and what was the idea about creating, for example, Quechua articles in the Wikipedia in Quechua and how to make, 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 uh, make the Quechua knowledge present on the web, basically. So all these ideas came up and we basically meet in a, a school in the town. And as you can see, there are four people there and there is only one, one girl. So this is also one, something that I noticed since the beginning of this journey. And well, it was also during the pandemic, so it was really hard to, to gather people in such a context. And at the end of this session, what I learned from that experience was that it, it will not be easy. So it's not easy, I think, also for all, any other community because it's always, there's an enthusiasm, there is an, a lot of motivation, but probably at the beginning you don't see results. So, but this is totally fine because I don't go for gather a million people, but I go for these ones that are interested and they come and they attend and they want to share their experience, they want to contribute as well. So this was this experience in, in, in Peru and it was a tough journey, but it's still it's going. So it's still going because I'm still working on that idea because I, I think Wikipedia is important for all of us. And so what is the outlook of my presentation? I will talk uh, why uh, Wiki Andes, this is the group that um, I'm trying to form in Peru and also how to do pedagogy in 
uh, in free knowledge using all these Wikimedia projects and also what we have learned so far, some data, statistics and, and some experience about uh, this journey and towards Wikimedia 2030. So why Wikimedia Andes, as I called, I, I, my, my, our team is called Wiki Andes, but I think in the future it could somehow it's a dream, but it could be something like a Wikimedia Andes. So I will, I will, I will fight for that. And I will explain why. Um, well, we are four people currently, and we work on this Wiki Andes project. And our mission is basically to develop and strengthen 21st century skills for all. So not no one behind. This is the current uh, geographical map, as you can see, and you can take it as a thematic or uh, geographic thing if you see this, this, this uh, map. However, I have to mention that more, more of the well-established communities or languages are more or less occupying most of the landscape in, in South America. So it's Spanish, it's Portuguese and other languages, and the minorities are being relegated in, in this context. So now uh, we will go to specifically to the context of Peru. And what I found there, more or less, it's a gender gap in the Andes. This is uh, my town. And as you can see, there are 15 people there, but only three are women. So there are still things to fight for. Then um, since we don't have, uh, we are suffering uh, marginalization because uh, during these last months, as you can maybe uh, have read in the news, there are a lot of fights uh, from the Quicho communities, Aymara communities, uh, that went to the capital city, to the capital of Peru, to say uh, we have our rights and we uh, want to change the things. We don't, we don't want to wait anymore, so any, any time more, because we need the changes. So we, don't, we are not part of the making decision also. We are, um, the technology is not arriving where we are, where we live. So the education, for example, during the COVID, it was based on the radio. So if you imagine the situation, so the first and second grade listening the radio during the, uh, from 8 to 10 a.m. and from 10 to 12, the third and fourth grade of the school. So this is, this shouldn't happen. And what we are having also is an educational crisis. That's what uh, the topic is mainly about. And there are groups, for example, saying, okay, we will teach them. We will, um, we will show how the technology is advancing and so on, but all the courses are in Spanish. And you are talking with people that are living in the Andes, uh, talking in Quechua language. And this is something um, I think should be changed because even if they uh, speak or learn Spanish, I think the society should change in a way that they could teach also in Quechua language. Now, uh, how to do pedagogy in free knowledge. Here I explain more or less the ideas that we came up to bring these Wikimedia projects to the Andes. So the main goal in this um, is to basically democratize the contributions based on the users or contributors' skills. So we don't force them, we don't tell them, okay, you should edit Wikipedia because we are doing this. No, this is not the way. So what we do, it's basically focus on several things like writing because we never learn how to write in Quechua or reading because we never read a book in Quechua but we can do this kind of thing. So according to what they want, what they would like to contribute. So we, for example, develop um, um, some projects that I will explain now. And also how to, uh, for example, if you didn't listen uh, Quechua from another region or another country. So also this is important and relevant for, for our community, for the Quechua in general. So regarding reading, uh, well, I, I show them, uh, for example, yesterday I was explaining about reading Wikipedia in the classroom and the idea of bringing this uh, program is to empower them and to show them that they can more or less use the Wikipedia for reading in Quechua language, but also for evaluating the content there, contributing there. So this is the idea and in this context we reach out to more than 500 teachers. We, 30, we are planning to certify more than 50 teachers in 2023. And also we, are, we already have two certified trainers. And we, are started, we started the, the implementations in the region of Puno, but we are looking for expanding these implementations around Peru. And also we have several collaborations with Bolivia as well in order to use and improve the materials or the assets in Quechua language, Aymara language, and Guarani language. So this is also really important for us. 
This is our experience. Uh, this is a room at the university and how we explain the reading Wikipedia in the classroom program. There were some difficulties to run the program in uh, on-site mode, so we changed it to the hybrid mode, also to the fully online mode. So, and about writing, how they can, for example, um, continue with the writing of Quechua is uh, through Wikisource. I, I, I think you all know Wikisource, but you can, for example, there uh, upload a document in a native language and the contributor can, for example, transcribe this content and you can practice some new words or learn how to write in Quechua. Then uh, regarding writing, for example, I, uh, I collaborate with a science club in Quechua in Peru since 2020 and every year I dedicate also one month, more or less in September, where we uh, basically train or teach 40 students around the world. Um, they are from Kicha communities as well. And we join in a, in a way that they can learn new methods, technologies, also they can bring up new words and gather a community there. So this is Science Clubs in Quechua. And about speaking, for example, you have several tools uh, that are uh, around Wikimedia projects. One of the best ones that I, I know is uh, Lingua Libre, where you can, for example, if a user, if a Quechua speaker wants only to contribute with the voice, so we can show them how to do it, or we can just do it to, all together. So just one person creates a user account, and this person selects a, little, a list of words, and these words are read by the, by the Quechua speaker. So, and these voices are recorded, I, uh, upload, uh, are uploaded into Wikimedia Commons, and then you can use it. And regarding that, for example, it was not easy to gather the community, so what we did was to start a radio program, so to show them how important it is to have our language, our voices on the web recorded. And so in this radio program, basically what we did was to not only um, play songs from uh, folklore music in Quechua, but also, for example, rock in Quechua, uh, salsa in Quechua, and all these kind of uh, genres of music, so they can be aware that this kind of music exists, this kind of songs exist. And also not only from Peru, so we also play songs uh, from Ecuador, from Bolivia, and how different are they? And also they can learn new words because they are listening a different dialect. So this was the intention, and also they were so interested on that, so if you want to listen, the playlist is there in the QR code. So, okay, and also once you, for example, um, you have some recordings in the Lingua Libre in the Wikimedia Commons, you can also retrieve this data. And if you're practicing the listening in this case, so you can just play these words and uh, learn how to pronounce these words. So. It's basically, you can use this, this technology. Also, you can work with a spoken Wikipedia. You can ask someone that read to read an article in Quechua so it can be recorded and uploaded in Wikimedia Commons, and then you can use it in a Wikipedia article. And also, if the user is more advanced or it has a university level, for example, we try to, well, this is actually for more general um, users, more young people, but, um, we want to document the traditions, the culture, and so on uh, from the region of Puno. So we decided to uh, show them Wikimedia Commons and how to basically uh, take pictures and basically, basically that. So uh, we made a contest bringing Nuno's Carnival to Wikipedia. So basically, there was a contest for uh, of photos of uh, musicians, artisans, and videos about them. So because the traditions are not the same every year and they are changing the clothes, the colors and so on. So it's important to capture this, this changes, this evolution as well. And I think from the result of this, we improved the Wikipedia article of the town and we include more photographies and pictures there. And also the, the municipality, for example, said, okay, this is a good idea actually. So we can do it next year, but still it's a, a ongoing so this is some ideas that they can maybe not uh, um, they are not um, for example aware of so I just tell them okay we can do this and I can help you and we can we can manage to do it together and for more technical users or contributors we for example are planning or we are we, we have built a knowledge base for linguistic uh, aspect of Quechua 
and also for general knowledge. So basically, we have a wiki-based instance where we store uh, the linguistics um, topic of the Quechua language and where we already have more than one million statements there. And we are planning to record the voices of the verbs, nouns, and all these words. And we collect dictionaries, vocabularies that are in PDF format or in an unstructured format, but then we convert it into a structured format so we can afterwards link it to Wikidata. And so here, for example, you can see a lexem and then the senses in different languages and also some examples of the use of this word and where you can find this source. So what we have learned so far is uh, in this journey to build inclusive, innovative, harmonious and democratic spaces of contributions for all, basically uh, we located in the region of Puno and we work on during the January to June, but this work started since 2019. So it's uh, hard to tell how many people we reach. And the gender is still an uh, uh, issue. Uh, it's only the 34% it's women. Then we have how young people is not, also not that involved on this um, on, on the on the basically on the instructions or the, on the courses, then also mostly public um, uh, workers or participants are more from public institutions, and the ideal days for the training programs, for example, for teaching them or for talk with them, it's basically Saturday or Fridays or Mondays. And the times are between five to seven p.m. or between six to eight p.m. because during the day they don't have time for doing it. Then also we ask many things about the encyclopedias, the quality of information, and if they believe that it's uh, reliable or not. Then we also have more how they access the, the encyclopedias in general. We also have what resources they use for plan their lessons, and also we ask if they use Wikipedia. Certainly, they, uh, the 48 percent they use Wikipedia and other educational websites. And also we ask what sources of information do you know and to what extent do you consider them to be reliable? Then, for example, you can see the textbooks are, has a higher score and also maybe websites. So this is something uh, to, to, to know as well. Are you familiar with training courses as well? We ask them. Uh, I think during the COVID they also uh, made some courses and we, we can show that they are, um, they are more uh, used to online courses. And also what they like about this, what they, their motivation about taking these courses or workshops, it's new ideas, basically new ideas, certification, okay, uh, but also meet other teachers. I think this is, building this community is hard and also between the edu education, um, EduWiki, we are trying to do this, right? So beer and gather the community all together. Also, we ask where do you find professional training opportunities and mostly they are uh, finding it in social media. So yeah, think about that. So how we are doing it towards Wikimedia 2030? Well, we are proposing this innovative space for doing pedagogy in the, in the free knowledge ecosystem because not, we are not forcing them. We are just showing them if they are, would like to um, contribute on this way or on that way. So basically there are different uh, methods to do it and we are just showing them how to do it and they would decide what, what they can do. Um, also, we are seeing ways to engage to the community and basically how to engage with minority communities because for example, the program radio was an idea to gather them, to show them how important are their voices. And pedagogy is a good investment. It gives more and better opportunities to all. Then people are more likely to engage with society, education, and employment. So it's important what we are doing now. And towards Wikimedia 2030, we seek to drive and facilitate innovation that will help us to basically improve user experience, uh, bring uh, inclusive and equality. And I just want to finish as yesterday, I truly believe that. So what we are doing in, on pedagogy is that we need new, um, new approaches. And that's why we are here. That's why we are gathering together to bring up more ideas and building new ecosystems for education. So thank you for, for your attention. If there's any question,
th thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks for this uh, session because I found it really interesting. There was a thing that uh, punched me because I felt uh, like really appealed. I mean, I felt appealed in many of the slides, but uh, there is one particular slide when we can see what is uh, the text of a drama of a, of a theatrical work. And to me, it's really funny because it's uh, the same situation that had the Catalan language. It's a, it's a previous slide. Uh, is there really the same situation that the Catalan language had in Valencia in the 19th century, uh, where most of the literature, I, I guess that with Quechua language will be the same for what I've seen. Uh, most of the literature was theater because as being a literary, I mean, there was a time where people Mm, there were a lot of people who were able to even read, and those who were, who were able to read were taught in Spanish. So we have the, the theater as the only way of having actual literature because as it was made as a representation, it was appealing for the audience. And to me it's really funny because I see that the intertext, the explanations are in Spanish which is the exact same situation that the Catalan language had in the 19th century in Valencia. You know, uh, uh, then, uh, sorry for making it long, my, my question is, um, when we work with that kind of works in Valencia, it happens that uh, our language got the normalization in the 30s, depending on the region in the, in the um, 110 years ago or 90 years ago. And the thing is that those texts from the 19th century are very difficult to understand by Wikisource because they are written uh, using an anarchic color orthography, let's say. So my question is, uh, do you have that kind of problems while using Wikisource? I mean, uh, Wikisource does understand Quechua, let's say, automatically, or do you have to make a lot of work of rebuilding the text that is given from the original source? Um, thank you for the question. And basically, what we do here is kind of uh, editathon. So we gather people and we invite them. We upload a document, and somehow the experienced user, for example, they type it really easy. They transcribe the text, and some of them try to use, for example, the automatic uh, transcriber, and it work. It works quite well. So you also have two options. I think there are two transcribers uh, algorithms inside Wiki Source. So they use. They try to use do, both of those and they just fix it by small um, yeah, errors. It's compulsory to learn Quechua in the primary school? No, no. We, we actually, we, we are not educated in Quechua at all. So even in the primary, nor, nor in the secondary, not in the university. But I found uh, universities around Europe and US that they teach like a, a proper career of three years teaching Quechua and I met them in Paris talking in Quechua. So that's, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the very comprehensive and uh, and uh, the, the presentation that gave a very good overview of the different uh, activities. I wonder, when do you talk to teachers in the region? And when it is about the kind of content that is most important for your Wikipedia language version. So what kind of topics for the young readers? Do you have a certain idea which topics would be the most useful or the most appreciated? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. And basically, in this context, we work with uh, with teachers, and they, for example, they have a, a curriculum. And in the curriculum, for example, we uh, show them if there's article of, uh, article about, for example, um, the small town or pre-Inca town around uh, an old town around our village. So they can say, okay, it's not there. So maybe we can do some research, and we we can work on that. So also the information has to be updated, for example, okay, let's look at our district, who is the, the, the major of our district? And they found out that it's not updated. So they started to fix these uh, minor changes, ma making these minor changes, and they realized, okay, this is the way how we can do it. So we cannot only work on our district, but maybe we can do it the next district as well. And also we can add more 
uh, organizational stuff that are relevant for us or more up, we can talk more about the mountain so they actually in the in the in the, in the meeting they say we would like to focus on these things so we of course guide them through the more local uh, knowledge but they decide what to contribute and how um. Congratulations for this beautiful project. And I'm uh, very curious about this idea of uh, science clubs in, in Quechua. So who is um, performing these, these workshops? Are there scientists that speak Quechua? Have you mapped uh, more, let's say, uh, scientifics that speak Quechua that could uh, uh, help these science clubs? Yeah, thank you for the question. And yes, so we are basically from all over the world. We born in Peru. We were born in Peru, and but we still speak Quechua. And we decided to gather in a series of workshops. So in a, during the month, every weekend, we develop some courses about, for example, let's say uh, botanic, history, astronomy, and so on. And also, I about uh, I talk about uh, computer science. I talk about the Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects, and so on. And we show them all the possibilities that they can uh, uh, they can they, they can have for building new words, for using the kitchen knowledge, and all these things. So, yeah. Any other question? Thank you.